open the door. Okay. Now, what you will find is that when you start collecting that data, it is all over the board, okay? Because there are no standards. Think back 10, 15 years when the imaging world was creating DICOM, okay? And DICOM is not perfect, admittedly. It's, I say, 31 flavors of vanilla. But there are standards. There are, here's the kind of information you have to report, you have to define, okay? In the non-imaging side of the world, we have no standards, so we have like 3,100 flavors, okay? And there are, the, the whole network theme thing is all over the board. Newer products tend to be closer to um, current IT industry standards, but don't count on them to be consistent with current IT standards. Um, you will find that your health system maybe um, has the latest and greatest wireless system, it works great. It's so robust. It was built for the business side. It supports those laptops and the tablets and other, what I call the business side of healthcare, great. Because the devices you're using came from the same companies. They're built with the quote unquote right cards, okay? The medical devices on the other hand could be two, three, four generations behind because of product development, because of the regulatory cycles, all those things that the IT products don't have to worry about. So keep that in mind. There again, that's more information you bring to the table that's incredibly valuable to your IT teams and to your architecture <coughs> and infrastructure support teams. When something goes south, they may not be able to figure it out. You may have the answer because you know about this, what I'll call the acquisition device mm -hmm. at the front end in the clinical environment. Okay? These are two organizations that are working fast and furious to help define these standards. Um, Continua attends, as it says, is really more in the personal health and wellness, it's sort of that primary care, that front end piece. And then um, the IHE, not to be confused with the HIE, <laughs> um, is working more in the acute care environment. They have huge initiatives, in particular around bedside monitors. That is the place that most healthcare organizations start bedside monitors and infusion pumps. Um, ventilators and anesthesia are not far behind them. Okay. So, let's fast forward to a place where all our medical devices are being interfaced. We have EMRs and EHRs and whatnot. This, just a, a myriad now of new networks or subnets that have to be managed in the organization. And it's one thing if the, the, the accounting department's network goes down, it's another thing, and, and we know this, it's the reason we fought for years to have our own networks. When it goes down in the clinical environment, that means you can't ask a patient to throw that PVC again. <laughs> it, it, there's a, there's a, a risk management piece that has to go with this. And out in the hallway, there's an update on this, um, IEC 8001. There were a number of presentations at the Amy conference uh, this last June on this, and there's more information coming in terms of not just the standard, but also how do, where's the instruction manual? <laughs> how do I build this and how do I manage it and use it? Okay, these, all these networks that are going to come up and pop up and these interconnections are going to have to be managed um, both technically and from a risk management perspective. So this is a, re, a, a tool that uh, you, you, you or somebody in your organization is going to need to become familiar with. This is a full-time job. This is not something that you give um, one of the techs in your department to kind of sort of do when they're not doing, you know, PMs and running calls. This is going to be a full-time job. Okay. Now, another thing that's rolling off of all this that, that um, my team and I have run into um, several times now, uh, especially in the last year, is alarm management. Because now we have all these devices that are starting to interconnect more, um, whether it's through these special interfaces that are being built with EMRs, or if it's just healthcare organizations uh, aggregating more devices, say through their bedside monitor. There's alarms going off left and right. Okay, how do we get the right alarm to the right caregiver at the right time? Um, there's pagers and there's cell phones and there's a zillion different things, uh, tools, toys, I like to call them, out there. 
But keep in mind, and this came up significantly in a, in a summit that was held uh, in early October, um, the uh, Medical Device Alarm Management Summit, you have your primary alarm, our traditional bedside and central station monitors, and then all these other things are secondary alarms. But most, I would say most, many hospitals that are deploying these tools are using this as their primary. So how do you manage that both technically and from a risk management perspective, a patient safety perspective? What happens if that communication network goes down? What is your fail safe? How do you manage that? These are lines of thinking that we in the biomed community are used to walking through. Many of these systems are deployed by IT, who doesn't, and, and, I'm, and I'm just, it isn't meant to be demeaning, they're not in the clinical environment. So they don't necessarily recognize or think about what the ramifications are if it goes down. Well, you know, the alarm will go off again. How long does it take, you know, how, how long does a, a patient have to be in apnea before it's a problem? Not long. So, again, another place. For tools, there's a lot coming out of this summit. Um, I, I had the opportunity to attend. It was two days of real intensity, real intensity. Something that came out of it that became very apparent to me that I guess I had taken very much for granted. There were a number, of, what was nice about this summit is there were clinicians, there were manufacturers, there were regulators, the Joint Commission was there, there were um, all kinds of clinical engineers and biomed techs. But what astounded me were the number of folks that, how many of you have um, full disclosure in your ICUs and your critical care? Does anybody here know what that is? Okay. This is going to be a very important tool. Okay. This is uh, truly an IT system that came out many years ago. And some hospitals adopted it right away and others said this is just, this is too expensive. This is just an extra we don't need. We're going to need it moving forward. It is a place where literally one line of ECG forever and ever the, for the patient's entire stay, 24 hours or many days, you can define it's really a function of the storage, but it's typically 24 to 96 hours window where it keeps every single beat. It could be one lead, it could be every lead, and every other parameter that's being monitored. And Holter, how many of you guys have Holter? Okay, same idea, right? Okay, so in the old days, to get a patient out of the hospital, you had to do a Holter on them. You had to make sure they were okay. Okay, that they could leave. Well, many hospitals adapted full disclosure 15, 12, 15 years ago because they could use that. They could do a Holter-like analysis. They could look at the beat-to-beat -beat over the last 24 hours, say, doc could say, yep, this patient's fine, and discharge them quicker than saying, okay, I think it's time to do a Holter on the patient. Now I have to put the Holter on you and I have to wait another 24 to 48 hours to do it. Patients were getting out of the hospital quicker, okay, because we could do it right then. I think it's time to do a holder. Okay, let's go do it. They could, you know, they could do that analysis. What came out of this summit was the fact that there are alarms going off that don't mean anything. I said, what do you mean it doesn't mean anything? There are studies that came out, and, and you can find this from some of the, the, the this information, is, all the presentations are on the, again, amy.org. Go to Hot Topics, go to the alarms, and you can go see all the presentations that were made. There was a presentation about um, PVCs. I can remember sitting in the hospital, okay, how do you want this? There's like 16 alarms related to PVCs, I think. I don't know, you guys are more tuned to it. Um, and we had to get them all set and defined and whatnot. There was literature in 1988 that said, yeah, they're PVCs. The alarm's gonna go off. But there's not really something clinical that we're going to do about it. I almost fell out of my chair. I said, how can that be? You know, we've got all this, we're focused on things, we're monitoring, if you will, we're monitoring the wrong things. Now, as a clinical engineer, should I have known that? Maybe, maybe not. Should my clinicians have known that? I would hope so. I would hope my nurse managers would. But I learned it at this sort of a symposium. Again, getting out there and just reading this.